uh, 17. This is the newspaper review segment on Metro TV's Good Morning Ghana. And I'll start by uh, going through stories making headlines in our newspapers for today, after which I'll introduce my panelists here and we'll delve into the discussions. And uh, I'll start as usual with daily uh, graphic. 12% Ghanaians jobless, says statistical service. Uh, G Oil and Gas opens facility at Tadi Port. Kintampo Waterfalls Tragedy, the story. Coco Money, education played role in Indy's struggle, uh, speaker. But documentary stares controversy over Nkrumah, Dankwa Rose. That's for the Daily Graphic. Uh, the Ghanaian Times. Resource institutions uh, to fight corruption. That's a uh, charge. GJA postpones elections. Online passport application will be extended to all regions. That's the uh, Vice President, Dr. Mahamadou Baumia. Uh, two arrested for kidnapping boy. And uh, it says, check your land title registration in the Spectator tomorrow. So if you bought a land, uh, make sure you get a copy of uh, the Ghanaian Times tomorrow to check your land title registration. Uh, the Daily Guide. Dumelo busted with missing cars. Uh, has a picture of uh, Ghanaian actor John Dumelo. Uh, I peddle lies about Nanado. Kojo uh, Chumbuafu. Mahama Boys Under Fire. Accra Mayo approved. That's a picture of uh, Mohammed Ejaisoa, who is the new mayor of Accra. Of the Chronicle, NDC shoots down Kwesi B as party leaders uh, tear each other apart. Jesus turned at risk of collapsing. Local coach is best for our national game. That's for the Chronicle newspaper. The Daily Dispatch. Mark Woyongo insults JDM, that's John Dramani Mahama. I had reservations about his leadership. Rice consumption, West Africans versus Asians. Of the Inside newspaper. How Britain looted us, called from Africa Watch magazine. Presidential aspirants Lee Okran calls them dreamers and more. The Daily Searchlight, Baumia Storm's passport office has a picture of uh, Vice President Aji, Dr. Mahamadou Baumia, uh, interacting with some uh, workers uh, at the passport, Accra passport office. All government residential facilities are uh, ministries to switch to solar. Uh, that's Bwachi Hijaku, uh, Minister for Energy. And GJ postpones election indefinitely over disputes. The Daily Statesman. Manual passport application must be over. Uh, that's according to Vice President Alaji, Dr. Mahamadou Baumia. Uh, AJ so I guess 100% as new Accra mayor. Other stories uh, up there. NDC plans backfire uh, over attempts to incite traders. 398 million approved cities approved for Foreign Affairs Ministry. I've been granting MMDCs key to Ekufado's success. Delhi Heritage. NDC 2016 campaign was fanfare, uh, says uh, Adwesi Nuchu, as he rubbishes a uh, tree campaign in Volta region. Ekufado's man secures 100% votes. A Foku refused bail after 672 days in cell. Uh, at the top, Kona, uh, government to support Ms. Ghana pageant. Environmentalist rejects Akufado's bauxite plan. Delhi Post. I want Mahama back in 2020. Kojo Chumbuafu. 
Jogate Committee's report won't be objective. That's uh, ACEPA. A Jacob bribery scandal. Committee refuses a black one final room to testify. And uh, Michael Bobby to be laid to rest tomorrow. The new weekend crusading guide. Regional chairman calls our defeat. Uh, Sofo Azoka tackles Mohammed's accusers. Sending money from one network to another becomes reality as vice president endorses national switch for uh, interoperability operation. And uh, Frank Opeine is our man. Uh, that's a uh, general MPP uh, rally behind the constituency secretary. The catalyst. Tension mounts in police service over inspectors' competitive examinations. Uh, victimization of uh, at PURC over serious exposés. Workers renounce trust in Samuel Sapon. Youth group finds troublemakers at uh, TTH. Says they are enemies of progress. On the top right corner, uh, Parliament approves budget. Ministry of Local Government. That's for the catalyst. Uh, the Delhi Democrats, Baumia Samira, fingered, flirting with companies, uh, they are accused. West Blue funds Ghana at 60 library projects. Uh, Parliament appeals for support for children with Down syndrome. Uh, water for all, Ghana. On Rocky Path. The Gazette. One million one constituency uh, dollar cash disbursement. Who are the thieves? Uh, Bamiya stays up trouble at LGRD. Uh, Parliament approves budget for NDPC but calls for sufficient funds to operate. Uh, Legal brain cautions government of a special prosecutor, says declaration. And uh, angry Ni Amasa Namwale charges on Peace FM over negative reportage. The Inquisitor. Enemies of progress plot against Kandapa uncovered. Uh, FRW B. Boss warns Ghana won't get water to import, he says. All must protect water bodies. Uh, GACL gets new MD. That's for the Inquisitor. The Herald newspaper. Government pays MPs 24,750 cities million, uh, million cities as rent allowance. Uh, 90,000 cities for each. Sumptuous car loans also cooking. Jogate Bribery Committee in Cover Up. That's a question being asked in the Herald newspaper. CID and Circuit Court chase Invincible Forces members of a Flagstaff House assault case. Uh, at the top, can I says, disregard social media report against anti malaria drugs. That's a FDA. Weekend today, prisoners beg for arms. Drivers must fix traffic, traffic light if uh, the power of red lipstick. Uh, That's for weekend today. Uh, the Find That newspaper. Toxic diesel, no end in sight. Ghana Standards Authority uh, says progress hinges on tour retooling. Online passport centers for all 10 regions. Uh, that's uh, Vice President uh, Dr. Mahamadou uh, Baumia. That's a picture of him interacting with some uh, passport applicants during uh, the surprise visit he undertook yesterday at the Accra passport uh, office. Uh, two students die of suspected CSM in Boku. Uh, GE to give Ghanaians world-class training in oil and gas. 
Accra will be a smart city devoid of chaos and filth as new MCE. Gold Street business, Ghana's market share to Canada declining. Social media key uh, to in wooing investors and as a brand expert. And uh, business and financial times, tax cuts must drive exports to cushion city. Uh, that's Andani. Oil and gas challenges need long-term view. Uh, that's GE Bowles. And uh, developers want dialogue on land administration. And 750 million US dollars, euro bond, a judge, best sovereign bond in Africa for 20. 16. All right, so those are stories making headlines uh, in our newspapers for today, uh, Friday. Uh, we'll go for a short break. We'll come back. Uh, I'll introduce my panelists and uh, we'll delve into the discussions as usual. All right, you welcome back to the Friday uh, edition of uh, Newspaper Review Live on uh, Good Morning Ghana uh, on Metro TV. Uh, I've been joined by the panelists uh, in here. Uh, Michael Quay Jr., uh, a member of the NPP communications team. Oh, good morning and welcome. And uh, Okujeto Hablakwa, who's also a uh, former uh, minister and MP also a member of uh, NDC communications team. Uh, good morning and welcome, gentlemen. Hi, good morning. Mm. Mike. Good morning. How, how are you doing? By the grace of God, we are doing well. Okay, all right. And how are you preparing you for, for, for your new uh, assignment? Well, I like the, wor the word you use, soon to be. Okay. So, soon to be. All right. But uh, those ones are not the matters at hand now. Mm. The matters at hand are also, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. You're good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And where is Randy? Uh, he's, he's been away for some time. He will be oh, back. Oh, okay. Uh, hopefully okay. next week. Okay. All right. We are looking. Because at you know, before the election, you mm. were saying that this year he was going to retire. So I thought he had started the retirement. But if he's traveled, then uh, it's fine. As soon as he comes, I have to call him to find out his plans for Metro. <laughs> are you aware of any plans of? Retirement. No, I don't think okay. he'll retire. I, oh. th I think he changed his mind. Uh, oh, to God be the glory. <laughs> <laughs> to God be the glory. <laughs> All right, uh, let's delve into the discussions on stories making headlines in our newspapers uh, for today. Um, yesterday, the Vice President, uh, Dr. Mohamed Baumia, uh, paid a surprise uh, visit to the Accra Passport Office. And, uh, you know, uh, he stressed on the need for online passport applications uh, to be extended to all uh, regions. Uh, uh, he also uh, was worried at the time that uh, most Ghanaians spend at the passport office, uh, you know, the process of acquiring a Ghanaian passport. Uh, and he reiterated the, the need for us to, you know, put measures in place uh, you know, to ensure that Ghanaians spend less time at the passport office and go through less stress. Uh, in the acquisition of passports. Uh, I'll start with you, Kujato. Uh, well, uh, good morning, Majid, and uh, good morning, Mike. Good morning to all our viewers. Um, I think that it is in order to indicate that the surprise visits that His Excellency the Vice President has been embarking upon are in the right direction. Uh, we all do recall that uh, the late President Mills, mm -hmm. uh, God bless his soul, uh, used to engage in that. And we do know that he paid surprise visits to a number of uh, state installations. Now, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia has also adopted uh, this strategy. And I think that it will help to keep functionaries of the state, public servants, civil servants, appointees, all of us in the public space who render public service 
these efforts to by superiors to appear on the scene unannounced and to find out what is going on, how things pan out on an ordinary day, on a regular day, do help. Because if the Vice President or His Excellency the President, Nanado Danko Akufuado, are paying an announced visit and the particular institution they intend to visit is notified or put on notice and they are aware, certainly the reception will be different that day. Mm -hmm. The president is coming, the vice president is coming, a minister is coming, say a select committee of parliament is coming. And so let us put up our best behavior. Let us uh, prepare this place in a way that uh, will give as a very good image. Mm -hmm. But when it's a surprise visit, it allows for the superior officer making the surprise visit to see what happens to every Ghanaian mm -hmm. on an ordinary day. So the whole concept of uh, surprise visits, I am one to support it. Uh, it's not new, uh, as I said earlier, but it's good. Uh, and, and we should all be doing that. Um, um, and, and it should not only be at the presidential level. Um, if you have been assigned the role uh, as a minister of state, as a regional minister, as a district chief executive, as a member of parliament, as a chief director, as a director, these things do help. Um, get out of your comfort zone. Um, don't wait for reports always. Uh, try to go beyond the uh, usual briefings, the usual uh, reporting mechanisms that come uh, from the various agencies or sectors or offices under your domain and try to understand on a first-hand basis what happens to the ordinary Ghanaian, what happens to everybody uh, when they seek to assess those services. So, so the whole concept of, uh, of surprise visits is one that I think that we ought to encourage and we should encourage it across the board, across the board. And, and, and if you, even if you look at um, uh, a religion like Christianity, uh, the doctrine of Jesus Christ will come like a thief at night. The rapture will take place unannounced when we are not aware admonishes all of us to be ready as Christians because of the day of reckoning, the day of accountability. And so I think that uh, any um, uh, intervention by public servants which has that surprise element, I think helps, especially for a country that is uh, noted not to be too great when it comes to um, our services, how we relate to our clientele, you know, customer relations, and how we, you know, uh, um, we, we, we work on the job, especially in the public service. There is a view that public servants tend to be um, a bit uh, more lax, and we take a lot for granted uh, as public servants, and we do not render services as as, as we should, if we compare the public service to the private sector. And I think that there have been various um, attempts to reform the public sector. I remember that Dr. Papa Kwesindum was given that assignment under mm -hmm. President Kufu, and it was a big deal, big deal in this country, how to reform the public sector, make the public sector uh, more responsive. And I know that under President Mahama, he also used to talk about it. He indeed set up um, a, a feedback mechanism uh, he put uh, Dr. Park in charge, where uh, people of the general public, members of the general public, can uh, report to that outfit uh, whether services are being rendered appropriately or not. So you, you can see that successive governments have tried to improve on how 
uh, we deliver on public service. But having said that, on the specific matter of passports, we need to uh, commend the former foreign minister, uh, the Honorable Hannah Tete. You know I serve on the Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament as a ranking member, and uh, we have reviewed a lot of work that has taken place at the passport office, and we um, have commended uh, the foreign ministry under the, the, the former minister, the Honorable Hannah Tete, mm -hmm. and under the current foreign minister, uh, the Honorable Shelley Ayoko Boche, who is continuing with some of these reforms. And she has made passport reforms her priority priority, topmost priority, as she, she, she puts it. Uh, we have interacted with her as a committee of parliament, and she has indicated this clearly. Interestingly, we also invited the director of passports three weeks ago to meet our committee. And uh, he outlined what had transpired under the previous government. He talked about the new service that were bought for the passport direct, 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 directorate, the new industrial printers. Uh, we used to have only one industrial printer, uh, which often broke down and it affected, delayed the it delayed process. the whole process. Uh, they now have uh, some additional industrial printers, as uh, the passport director informed us. And they were quite pleased with the commitment that the former minister showed. Beyond that also, the, the former minister launched an online passport uh, processing mechanism, which she launched last year. So you go online, and um, this, uh, this, this, this was launched in four regions. You go online and you start the process. Uh, you fill the forms. But you know, because it's a 2D barcode biometric passport, they need your biometrics. You can't do that online, the comfort of your home. So you still have to come to the passport office mm -hmm. for, for your biometrics to be taken. And that's where uh, the bottleneck is at the moment. And uh, the vice president on his visit noticed that there's quite some stress. And uh, once again, you have Goro boys, people who, with collusion with some staff, unfortunately. And in these matters, you notice that it is both the general public who are trying to assess the services and then people within who collude and want to, you know, pay money and beat the system, which doesn't help in anybody. If we are all minded to follow the rules, not to pay anybody, there will be no Goro boys. And then if those within the service also are efficient, then there will be no need for these Goro boys or middlemen who try to abuse the process. So it is at the point of biometrics that we notice that there is stress. But the online system has substantially reduced the traffic. I mean, you know that the queues at the passport office used to be Used to, used to be long, very, very long, and very, and very and, stressful. And, and yesterday, yeah. uh, from the vice president's mm -hmm. interaction with the uh, director of the Accra Passport Office, yeah. uh, I think uh, he deduced that the online application system, as uh, which we're talking about, uh, yeah. you know, uh, is limited to Accra. The regions, you know, they don't have the online application system, so the pressure is mm -hmm. on the Accra. Uh, uh, unit. Uh, you have people coming in from other regions, mm -hmm. you know, to Accra, mm -hmm. thinking that when they come to Accra, you know, they'll get it fast. Mm -hmm. uh, the, our understanding as a committee, the Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament, it's that uh, we need to open more passport offices where the biometrics are taken. And if you look at the program for 2017 by the Foreign Ministry, I have a copy of the report which Parliament approved on the estimates okay. uh, of the foreign uh, ministry. There has been provision made mm -hmm. in the budget for 2017 for new passport application centers to be opened in the eastern region, western region, upper east region, and the upper west region. Mm -hmm. So these about five regions. About four regions. Four regions okay. Yeah. Eastern, Western, Upper East, and Upper West will be coming, will be coming on stream this year. Okay. And that will help ease the pressure. It's, it's, it's the biometrics. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the biometrics, everything could have been done online. And then you may just be called to go pick up your passport at some 
pickup point. But because of the biometrics, you know, that's why you have uh, these queues forming. But I think that the system can be improved, as we have pointed out to the minister as a committee, that uh, why don't they program those who go online and who apply? Uh, you should add another service where you indicate to the, uh, the, the, the member of the general public applying mm -hmm. that come for your biometrics on this day. You know, as it is now, you go online, mm -hmm. you, you fill in the forms, and then you proceed on your own. You proceed immediately to the passport office. And that's what really is creating the, the, the stress. So can you create another layer uh, of screening where you program the, ap the applicants so that I Mike, they are, they are Mike, appointment dates. Mike will days, come yeah. on Monday, I will come on I Tuesday. That. That's not really working at it's this point. Working. Yeah, it's not, it's not working. What, what we have been told uh, by our constituents and what, what we found out. So that, that, that has to improve. But to be fair to the passport office, if you look at the numbers, uh, uh, 2016, they had an all-time high um, issuance of passports. Uh, they managed to successfully issue 262 diplomatic passports, 149 service passports mm. uh, for those in the, uh, for, you know, the category of public servants, and then 261,792 ordinary passports. Wow. So in all, they, they, they issued over 262,000 passports, which, which is the highest, uh, we are told, uh, in, in recent years. So, you can see that uh, there's uh, some improvement in the efficiency and in the output, but certainly it can be better. And I think that the allocation which we made in the budget this year uh, for these additional uh, application centers in these four regions will substantially reduce uh, the pressure, which is one of the recommendations the vice president is making. But uh, uh, he uh, can be rest assured that this has been uh, taken care of in the 2017 budget. Except that if I may add that in the 2017 budget, we have a major, major difficulty with an action of the finance minister. And yesterday we were all added, the members of the committee and the minister for foreign affairs, that the finance minister's onslaught, his slashing of their IGF, you know, the foreign ministry is in a peculiar situation. Mm -hmm. So they retain 100% of their IGF. They are expecting to raise 149 million cities in that range mm -hmm. this year, 2017. And foreign minister Hannah Tete had secured an arrangement with the finance ministry where 100% of the IGF, the entire amount, is retained by the ministry. So that, and they had a, an interesting 35, 65% formula where the resourced, rich mm -hmm. missions, those who are able to generate the IGF, retain 35%. Then the 65% mm -hmm. is put in a holding account, which can service other missions, which are the distressed missions. For example, a mission in Geneva, very busy place, but they don't generate, so you can support them. And very soon, Mike will be benefiting from that arrangement, uh, which, which has really helped, you know, if you talk to the Foreign Service staff, they, they, really, they are really excited about this 100% retention regime. But unfortunately, this year, in this year's budget, we're all surprised, and the minister too was surprised, that the finance ministry says they can, they can keep only 51 million of the 149 million. So they are taking more than 60% more than away from the ministry. Now, the more problematic issue to point out is the fact that a $50 million loan facility was secured from Societe General last year mm -hmm. to refurbish our missions. You know, we have 57 missions abroad. Mm -hmm. So the $50 million, we, we're going to use the money, and Societe General has given the money already to the foreign ministry last year. And this year, we are rolling out a comprehensive rehabilitation, refurbishment of our missions abroad, which again will benefit you know, Mike's new office. But the repayment of that facility is hinged on the 100% retention. That is why Societe General granted 
the foreign ministry the facility. But if they were and this had so this, much, and so the, much, the foreign minister has retaining hundred percent. The foreign minister, Why yeah, the foreign minister. Facility, uh, no, be, that is not that's not what was happening in the case. Mm. This this is a new arrangement, which uh, the the foreign minister secured. Uh, so in the, it was in the 2014 budget for implementation, 2015. So this 100 percent retention is just two years old, 2015 and 2016. Mm. And then this loan facility was secured in 2016, only last year. You know, because you know the missions. If you visit our missions abroad, they were running down. Sometimes even you know uh, access to you know heating facilities. Our staff were complaining because the, the releases are also not timely from the Ministry of Finance. So this 100% IGA retention arrangement allowed our missions to really have control, and it you know it improved on their services, their efficiency, and all of that. And so we are appealing to the finance minister. And yesterday, this this point was made forcefully on the floor of the house that the finance ministry ought to reverse this decision so that the foreign ministry will retain their IGF. Because if not. We, this, the repayment of this Societe General $50 million facility will be in jeopardy because we have six years to pay and it's five years already left. One year is gone. Um, and you can't be paying with this paltry $51 million that they have been told to retain a whole year. When remember that you, there, there are two components. You need to support distress missions with this IGF and also pay the loan facility. So we are hoping that uh, the finance ministry will, uh, will respond positively to the appeal that we have made. And the foreign minister also made that point very, very strongly that it will be impossible for her to run her ministry if this uh, 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 attack on her IGF is made uh, to stay. Fortunately, they are both cabinet ministers. I hope that the president will also take it up. Having been a former foreign minister, he very much will understand these issues. And uh, if not, our foreign service staff will be in a precarious situation. This loan facility cannot be serviced, and uh, our distress missions will even be further distressed. All right, OK. Uh, Mike Okoye Jr., uh, the vice president uh, says uh, online passport applications will be extended to other regions, and uh, also stressed on the need for you know uh, all those bottlenecks uh, in the acquisition of passports to be removed. Thank you very much, Adele. Uh, let me say a very good, good morning to my brother, Sami, and uh, of course yourself for hosting us, and uh, the viewers out there as well. Um, this matter of passport acquisition for people to travel and so on is a bit of a headache. It's a big problem where people, they call you sometimes, even whether it's in the capacity as a lawyer, opposition politician, politician in power, any capacity, I want a passport. Mm -hmm. How can you help me? Ghanaians will feel confident that they can just go to the passport office and get a passport without knowing some so-called big person. I'm sure you get approaches. Mm -hmm. People are telling you, Adele, can you help me get a passport? Mm -hmm. Where you are nowhere involved even in that kind of thing. It is unfortunate and very sad. And more so unacceptable. We have to do something about it. And I'm sure this is one of the reasons why Dr. Baumia paid a visit to the place. I don't know in terms of the media, because I heard before he went there. So I don't know if the media, you were gathered somewhere and told we are going somewhere, and you all ended up at the passport office, or they told you we are going to the passport office. How, how did it pan out? I don't know, but I believe that those who went uh, uh, got the information at the last minute. Yes, because I spoke to someone as of yesterday morning, and I had a media person, oh, Dr. Bamia is going to the passport office. Mm. That means that it had leaked. Mm. So even what he went there to go and see and hear could have been covered up. You know, so that in itself was problematic. And the first thing that Dr. Baumia did was to speak to the public. Those outside, those forming queues. I don't know if you've been there in the last five years. Yes, I mean, there are virtually yes. fights breaking out. Yes. Fisticuffs. That bad. I mean, I know my brother Sami has been in the uh, gravy train for eight years. 
So he hasn't seen those fisticuffs if you have seen it before. Oh, no, we all go there, even for when you oh, have to renew your passport. So your you channel, go for your biometrics. Uh, but your channel is different. Oh, uh, no, maybe no. you, first of all, your car will pass. Oh, I don't know about then the retreat. You know different. the place. There's no uh, VIP. Oh, There's oh, no VIP oh, drive Sammy, through. Sammy, Sammy. Ah. Oh, my. They, 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 they're uh, waiting for diplomatic pass. Maybe they will bring it to your office. It doesn't matter. For mischief. No, oh, no, 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 no. No, we I go mean, there. We all go there for biometrics. There's nothing wrong with being in that position. But I'm saying that maybe for eight years, he has not seen the blows. Oh, my Do you understand? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. hey, but it's nothing wrong you with know that. I'm always on the ground. Uh -huh. Oh, always well, you're on the ground in Volta region, but not in Accra. <laughs> I am. You understand? Man. In Accra, you are living La Vida Loca. No, no, no. no not so, at all. This, this, this is a, a, a situation where, and this was a tease anyway. You're not supposed sure, to sure, worry. Sure. Too, yeah, no problem. You know, fights breaking out. And the staff themselves, they are frustrated. Mm. Very, very frustrated. Because there are not even enough of them. They don't have enough machines. I mean, listen to a country where we can use money for all sorts of, in quote, useless things. And we are now happy that we have got an industrial printer. Th think about it. Industrial printer. The minimum industrial printers we should have are 20. Two per region. So that if one breaks down, like standby generator. Where somebody made a joke before that first the generator was a standby but after a while ecg became standby mm -hmm. so the generator was rather the constant now it has gotten to the point where you go to the passport office and the, the you go there and they tell you come at a certain time you get there too then they tell you that there's light off light off so you should go and come the next day and constantly you have people queue there at dawn. You know, they dawn. and they tell you that the machine has broken down. So we can't process today. So everybody out on a regular basis. Pitiful. Unacceptable. It beggars belief. I don't know why they are saying central region, western region, upper east and upper west. It's like we are doing peripherals. Me. I'm seeing the center like this. Accra, Kumasi, Tamale. And then you add any other you like. Yeah, we have, we have those already. OK. So those are already established. Yeah. So why is everybody coming to Accra? They can't do biometric in Kumasi. They can't do simple biometric you know, in Tamale. They, they, all believe, they all believe that when they come to Accra, they'll get a passport. You know, no, um, the, 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 the machines are not there. So you because can apply. Still have to bring the documents. You still have to bring. To, you know, yes. Do the printing How can you can you before? imagine? You want a passport. Mm -hmm. First of all, in terms of expense, apart from the inconvenience, mm -hmm. you have to look for car. And if you come there and they say the light off, and you can't do it that day, you have to sleep. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a relation, you have to go and sleep the with the kaya out there. <laughs> or if you don't want that to hotel. And you see the boys. After they've sent the people, they'll be telling some of them, oh, there's this hotel here, oh, there's this hotel here. You can, they are even directing you for the profits that night. So you ask yourself, what is going on? It's a very serious matter that we need to look at. The public are unhappy. The workers are not enough. We don't have enough machinery. The uh, decentralization, and that's what Dr. Balmia talked about. Mm -hmm. We need to decentralize. And just, yeah. We need to decentralize the whole thing. Because really and honestly, I don't see why anybody should come from places like Kumase and Tamale to Accra for a passport. No way. Upper East Upper West, yes, they can go to Tamale, sort it out, bring our for or Kumase, and then even the rest, they can come to Accra. But even now, we are happy to hear that other places are being opened. This should happen tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. As we are procuring the land cruisers, then we are procuring the industrial machines. As we are procuring uh, uh, whatever else is being procured, then we are procuring the biometric machines. All the biometric machines that the EC used to capture certain things quickly. And it should even be that we should link it to the EC. When you come with your voter's ID, it quickly shows that you're already in the biometric system. The passport office is able to retrieve it. And you don't need to do any biometrics again. So we have to think. We have to think and apply and deal with these 
matters. Otherwise, it becomes a problem. And this online thing and so on and so forth, the online can only go as far as do the preparatory work. Because with some of the people, if we are not careful, it would lead to criminality. It would lead to other nationals acquiring our passports. So we need to find ways to also curb fraud, criminality. Mm -hmm. There are experts whose job is to deliver on this. All this takes is a project manager. When Dr. Baumia went there, he met the deputy director of passports. Where was the director? What was going on? What's the report that is going to be prepared after this visit? Because you know, Dr. Baumia has been to uh, Registrar General's He's been to um, ports, ports, ports. And, uh, 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 ports and harbor. Mm -hmm. um, he's also been to public procurement, for example, mm -hmm. and others. As soon as he leaves, all the problems that were seen, there must also be a report. And then recommendations as to what is going to be done and with timelines. As well as a budget attached. So that if the restraint is even budgetary, we know that, okay, mm -hmm then we will do how much of this in this space of time. But then it gets even more worrying where we have a situation where there are budget cuts in certain areas where we have challenges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is a problem in itself. But my beef, Sami, how come a department like Foreign Affairs, yeah. I'll add by the grace of God for them, have managed to get 100% IGF. As soon as they get 100% IGF, just like what's happening in GMPC and other places, the first thing is to use the projection to go and take a loan. You see, it is worrying. Because the issue is, if they didn't have the 100% IGF, how would this thing have been done? And if so, $50 million dollars. These are all things. So you see that apart from the central place of owing money to, that is like the departments and agencies who are becoming self-sufficient. As soon as they have their own self-sufficiency, then use that angle to take a loan. So now the other places that should have taken care of some of these things will now sit back and say, well, you can function. Now the budget has been cut. The loan cannot be paid. What will then happen now is that then there will even be more suffering for those missions that even need it. Because now, even the money that is coming, there is a loan burden on top of it. So did you go or did you come? As they say in our local parlance. Two steps forward and then three, in effect, backwards. So you're taking no steps. In fact, if anything at all, you are one step backward. So we need to look at all of these things and understand that your mandate as a minister or as a CEO is not to, you know, with your self-sufficiency, use it for such purposes. I disagree with it. But there could be certain peculiarities or certain um, business sense that led to that. Those details we are yet to see. We have to deal with that on that level. Now... That aside, the passport matter, as far as I'm concerned, is there's a big problem even with these diplomatic passports. Today, one of your uh, other radio stations had a documentary on it. Mm. People who are not entitled to it, you see, all these things are just rules. So if you're entitled to it, you use it. When you finish, you are done. As simple as. It is to facilitate government work mm. in a particular way. And yet we all know, especially some senior members, even in the cloth, and by that we mean religious leaders, who have diplomatic passports. And the difference with them is that theirs is virtually in perpetuity. Because unlike a minister who you use it for four years or eight years, or government is changed, you have to return it. Mm -hmm. They, whether it's government A or government B, he's still keeping the passport. So he's a permanent diplomat who doesn't have any diplomatic responsibility. 
We have to watch all these things. We have to give our passports to the right persons. We have to live and do things according to the law of the land. So these are all things that we need to look at in its entirety. And I pray that these are resolved as quickly as possible so that the passport office can have the space to do other things. In conclusion, mm -hmm. I think it's about time. Passport office, DVLA, EC, National Identification, and NHIS, any other that you may think of, should have one system that they feed from. So that when your biometric is taken for NHIS, they don't need to take it again for passport. It's there. When it's taken for um, elections, it's there. Once you come, the same name, date of birth, they put your biometric there. You see, it even prevents fraud. Because if you're not careful, the name that somebody has on his passport with his biometrics is a different name that the same person has with his biometrics for his license. Because the, the systems are not linked. So yes, if he goes to try it twice in the passport system, it will catch him. But in the EC system, he's free to give himself a different name. That can lead to fraud. You know why? Because everybody will believe that because it's biometric, it is right. But he has beaten two systems, and he has the two IDs. So when he's committing this crime, you use the driver's license, and his biometric with his name. And then when he's doing something else, you use a passport, his biometric with his name. And then it gives him a justification. Anybody, unqualified, a foreigner, whatever. These are national security matters. So in the interest of going forward as a nation, we need a centralized biometric that even helps the police. So that now if they're able to pick up your DNA or your fingerprint and they put it in that centralized system, as long as you're somebody who has voted before, license, this, that, that, as all mentioned, your identity will be known even to catch you as a criminal. We should even be able to link in West Africa mm -hmm. so that somebody who is um, another country, I don't want to mention, Ivory, Ivory Coast, cannot come to Ghana and do a different biometric ID. Because what will stop them? The system itself, we must think of ECOWAS fingerprinting. Just like how in the United States, they have the big uh, uh, FE system where they put fingerprints in one state and 55 states, it comes up. So these are some of the things that we need to look at going forward. And I pray that as a nation, mm -hmm. we will deal with some of these things sooner rather than later. Okay, all right. Uh, we'll take a short break here. We'll come back. All right, you're welcome back. It's a Friday uh, morning edition of Good Morning Ghana, live on Metro TV newspaper uh, review. And I am uh, Adel Christie, uh, much deeper. I'll continue with the discussions. Uh, and uh, I have a couple of newspapers uh, headlining stories about the uh, opposition NDC. I'll take a couple of them. Uh, the Daily Dispatch says Mark Wuyungu insults JDM. I had reservations about his leadership. The Chronicle also says NDC shoots down Chris B as party leaders tear each other apart. Uh, crusading Guide, the New Weekend Crusading Guide also says regional chairman cause our defeat. Uh, and also, uh, Daily Heritage NDC 2016 campaign was fanfare. Uh, that's by ABC Neutral uh, as he rubbishes key uh, campaign in the Volta region. Uh, so a couple of stories in there. Uh, I'll start with you, uh, Ablakwa. What's happening in your party? Very good question about what is happening in my party. Uh, what is happening in my party is clearly a manifestation of a vibrant democracy where everybody is having his or her say and doing a personal analysis of why we lost the December 7, 2016 presidential and parliamentary elections. 
we knew that as a social democratic party that has always given a voice to the rank and file and values their contributions, values their analysis and assessments of where we are as a party and as a nation and where we ought to be going, there will be very, very vibrant contestations and analysis of what the situation is and why we lost the 2016 elections. And that is why the Professor Kusiboche Committee was set up so that everybody who has concerns, who has an assessment of why we could not secure a one-touch victory for President John Dramani Mahama, which was our agenda and our objective, will go before that committee and make his or her views heard. The committee has been set up and the committee has been going wrong, has been very active. And nobody has questioned the caliber of persons on that committee and their neutrality, their fairness, and their ability to put together a very good report that will help in the reorganization, the revitalization, and the restructuring of the NDC to recapture power on December 7, 2020. And I'm happy about that, that nobody has questioned the, the pedigree and uh, um, the, 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 the neutrality and the caliber of persons who are serving on that committee. Uh, and, and so that is a good first step that we put in place a good committee that everybody has some confidence in. The challenge now is people, instead of speaking to the committee, are speaking to the media. Uh, so appearing to be misspeaking and, and uh, speaking in the wrong direction. Uh, because really, do you want to uh, put out your assessment and what you want your uh, uh, revision to be, your strategy to be, and all of that? Do you want to put it out in the public domain? Your opponents are listening. I mean, this is very competitive politics here. Um, so whatever reviews you think should take place, whatever new strategies you think should be adopted, it should be uh, sent to the committee, and that is why uh, it is not likely. And the New Patriotic Party didn't do it when they, when they lost in the 2008 elections. They did not uh, put out their review committee report for obvious reasons. Very, very, very um, obvious reasons. They didn't put out their report and their recommendations and all that, what their strategies are, because they didn't want us to know. <laughs> they didn't want the other political parties to know. And so the same way is we are not going to put out uh, the report and its recommendations and the new strategies and all of that. So there is a need for circumspection. There's a need for caution. And people are being baited and then there are some people who also want to make the news and all of that. Let us remember that at the end of the day, are we seeking to rebuild this party, rebuild the NDC, or we want to make a rebuilding effort more difficult? We want to uh, further, further um, uh, 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 destabilize the party. And there are, there are, there are people across the country. When I, when, I, when I travel around and I go on my you know, thank you tours and engagements with the rank and file, there, there are people who are still very, 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 very pained, who have not recovered. And indeed, all of us you know, have not recovered uh, from the defeat of 2016. So there's a lot of pain in the system uh, within the NDC. There's a lot of disappointment. But this is not how you channel it. This is not how you channel it. You want to channel it through the appropriate process. 
the laid down mechanism, which all of us have agreed, NEC put out this mechanism, the Professor Kwesiboche Committee. So I want to appeal to NDC members that this media frenzy which is taking place, it's really a frenzy. You know, everybody wants to be heard, everybody wants to put out their opinions and all of that. And, and, and some of the people who are talking, you know, are very, very senior people who one would have thought that they would, uh, in all due respect, be, uh, 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 I mean, appealing to others, you know, that no, let's use the Professor Kwesi Boche Committee. Let's channel it, you know. So I don't think it is too late for there to be a ceasefire. That's what we need now. Um, there, there, there ought to be ceasefire. And we need to ensure that we don't undermine the work of the Professor Kwesiboche Committee. Because what we are doing um, is that instead of channeling our concerns, to the Professor Kwesi Boche Committee. We are channeling it to the media, and the media can solve our problem. The media doesn't have any mandate uh, to investigate, to find out whether the claim you are making that you didn't get enough T-shirts, or the claim this person is making that some people came to speak to you in the Volta region, as somebody is saying. I mean, how would the media help you, you know, in seeking redress and making sure that moving forward, the NDC improves on his modus operandi and does things, uh, I mean, more properly in the view of the people who are raising these matters. So that is why it's important to, 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 to channel these concerns to the Professor Kwesi Boche Committee. And that committee has the mandate from NEC. They will report to NEC. NEC and the party will then work on the recommendations. So I will renew my appeal that this is not the way to go at all. Um, let's stay away from, from the media. And let us uh, ensure that uh, our very beautiful tradition as a party, we have been a party well noted to handle internal <coughs> matters uh, in recent years far better than our opponent, the New Patriotic Party. Uh, I'm very happy that so far you've not heard of any acid bath. There has been no uh, wielding of cudgels and, you know, machetes and guns at our party headquarters. Our party headquarters still remains a very, very secure zone. Um, we didn't see that when the new Patriotic Party had their own internal challenges. I mean, this was really bloody, really bloody. It was not just going on radio stations and talking. It was so, so bloody that at a point I'll have to be calling my friends, Mike, Nana Komia, and others to find out if they are safe, if they are still alive, because of what was going on. It was, for the record, he never called me. <laughs> it was, it was, but he never it ever was, called me it to was, ask if I was safe. Yeah, it was just for the record, but you, know, you can but, say but, it. But, but, yeah, when I, when, mischief, yeah, it doesn't matter. You know, when I call you and you tell me you're okay, why, why do you think I've been calling you and find out if you're fine those days? It was because I was worried at the point. We're all worried, you know, mm -hmm. for our friends in there. So He was calling me as so, a fellow <laughs> junior or that year, and also <laughs> as a church member. <laughs> Yes, we talk religion, <laughs> not politics. Yeah. Mm. And so once he was safe, I was okay, you know. So I, I must say that, you know, on a, on a more serious note, um, let's, let's, let's uh, ensure that as a party, these um, uh, uh, media uh, outbursts do not degenerate. It should not degenerate uh, because we saw what happened in the new patriotic party. It shouldn't degenerate to that level. Uh, let us quickly close ranks and defer to the Professor Kwesi Boche Committee. Very serious committee. Your Professor Kwesi Boche in there. You have uh, the Right Honorable Doa Jaho in there. You have uh, Comrade Hudu Yaya in there. You know, you have uh, uh, Honorable Fusuan Pufu in there. Honorable Juliana Azuma Mensa in there. I mean, very, very solid committee. Very solid committee. We all have confidence in the committee. So, but why, do you think the party why, members have confidence in the committee? Everybody does. I haven't heard anybody question mm -hmm. that we had some people elsewhere who should have done this job or, or question any member. But, you as know, you said, you know, know, so the members are not channeling their uh, uh, grievances to the committee. Yeah, a they few, cannot, uh, a few members have uh, have so have opted to to talk to the media, and I know that sometimes, you know, the 
the, the media also bits, the media bits. It's like what happened in Parliament yesterday, and I knew that this would be the outcome this morning. Mm -hmm. If you've been listening to radio this morning, there is an attempt to whip up sentiment against members of Parliament. Now, what did the media do yesterday? After the Westminster attack, they came to talk to MPs that, oh, uh, don't, don't you think that we need to start paying more attention to security of MPs? So what do you have to say? So voice pop. And uh, uh, some MPs spoke that, yeah, I mean, we all have to, because all parliaments in the world you know, need improved security. Then it's presented in the media this morning, as I've been listening to radio, this one on my way here, uh, that because of a Westminster attack, MPs are calling for more security. Mm. Then uh, the hosts are saying, so what about us? What about we, the people? These MPs, again, they always they want things for themselves. Meanwhile, we didn't on our own go and raise these matters on the floor of the House. There was no issue, no discussion on security in Parliament yesterday. But because on the sidelines, mm. journalists had come to ask MPs, Oh, what do you make of West, the Westminster attack? Don't you think that uh, you need more security? After they had spoke, the, the, the MPs had spoken, you see how it has been portrayed. So sometimes we all have to be careful. They'll come, oh, what do you make of the NDC defeat? And, and then, you know, they are trying to hit heads and all that. I'm not accusing the media <laughs> of anything, but I'm no, just saying that this is a period of, 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 of circumspection. We all have to be extra, extra careful. It's very tempting to go out there to use mainstream media or social media and go after people and maybe people we don't like or people who may have stepped on our toes in the past and all of that. But let's avoid the temptation okay. and let us respect the channels right. uh, of the Professor Kwesi Boche Committee. Okay, Michael Kwe Jr. Uh, the NDC, <coughs> uh, do you think there are cracks in the NDC now after the electoral defeat in 2016? Apart from the fact that uh, you have been generous to allude cracks to these deep holes, <laughs> abyss. I just want to quickly talk about the Westminster issue, mm -hmm. unfortunate issue. Yeah. We should be careful. You see, we are beginning to victimize parliamentarians. If you've noticed yeah. for the past years, whenever yeah. I come here, yeah. I like to talk for parliamentarians because as I'm not one of them, I can say what we should do. Have you ever tried to go to Flagstaff House before? Or have you tried it recently? Do you see the sacks yeah. and the barriers yeah. before you get to Flagstaff House? Why can't we have the same for Parliament? As a security zone. Because, you see, when you're a public figure, you're a target. No, but we have security men, uh, policemen at the It's not gates, enough. So it's okay. loose. It's loose. It's not enough. You see, what we, what we have to understand is that even Jesus Christ, it's not everybody who liked him. As a public figure, people were scheming to kill him. Yes, the general public is at danger, but the public figure who has gone for election from house to house, somebody's anger can even be that when the Kovanda boy went to this house to plait the woman's hair, you didn't plait it in my house, so I don't like you. Why did you go and um, make Banku in my rival's house and you didn't come to my house? There could even be a chieftaincy dispute, which you may not be aware of. Yeah. And because you went yeah. to that house yeah. to go and eat and drink with them, and you just happen to go around a different corner, which means their house, they are angry with you. You can be a target for so many reasons mm -hmm. as a public figure. So I'm saying that if we are going to protect the executive, why not the legislature? I don't understand a country where we should give executive car and we don't give legislature car. I don't understand. Maybe Ghana has got, if we want to stop it, then let's stop. Even president won't give him skit, won't give him car drawings like all of us. But why? It's as if as soon as we become a minister executive, even as a member of the legislature, then all the rest are now Sanquas. So why don't we have a situation where, and Sanquas means they are nobody. So why wouldn't we have a situation where the legislature is always aspiring to be a member of the legislature, uh, executive. executive, and so they don't concentrate on legislative business or they are trying to always catch the eye of the executive i'm telling you we have to look at these things look my constituency is in mumprugu yoyo and you are telling me that the land cruiser that i'll take there every day to go and do my work usually in the some of the bad west road areas yeah. that one i'll pay for it at the end of the 
four years. But the executive who will be in a car all the time because his house is in airport, he will meet a minister. So he will never go to Mumpugu Yoyo. He will still have the same land cruiser. But this is free. Does it make sense? We should ask ourselves this. We should stop victimizing them. It is true that they brought themselves up for elections. But enough is enough. Look at the kind of money that we give them. I mean, can you imagine MP no office? MP no secretary. MP no driver. MP no nothing. And we provide houses for judiciary and executive. We provide houses for uh, drivers for them. We provide cars for them. And we provide an office, just an office, for them to sit down and do research. Yes, we know some people are lazy. Some people won't work. But majority of them, if they are giving what we call, they are facilitated. They work. Even businessmen who are making profit, they need facilitation. How much more an MP? So you see MPs. I want to see some of them. Nana Komi and the MPs. You see them hiring their own private offices on some funny fringes. Is it helpful as a nation? We need to deal with this problem. So I don't see why uh, we should make this an issue. They are in danger. We should protect them. Simple. NDC. Ah, what's on me? Sami is part of the problem. Sami, Sami, oh, really? is part Sammy. of the problem. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm hearing that for the first time. Publicly going around before they can even settle after their defeat, already supporting one candidate that he should come back. He's the one they want. It's creating bitterness among the rank and file. You understand? When you, the leaders, you're already going around saying, Mahama Onapo is coming back. You are creating the problem already. Because the committee is saying that everybody should be quiet. Oh, but did I say, Let, that, did I say oh, others shouldn't come or no, shouldn't no, contest no, not, no, I was not, asked no, a personal question. I was, ah, well. It was an interview. So you are also following to the, to the journalist. <laughs> you know, where you I was asked my you, personal okay, view. Okay, so you fell so you also okay. personal. And I didn't so, attack so, anybody. I didn't no, stop any oh, other candidate. Nobody said you have attacked from, from, from contest. No, but you said you have a problem and all of that. You are not saying you are part of the problem. Because your utterances, in your case, you say journalists. Journalists are trapping people, but you yourself are being trapped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. We are all at risk. So, so we are all at now risk. how do you advise somebody? <laughs> because you are just falling into traps. Their emotions are taking over their head. They are angry. I mean, listen to something that somebody said. I'll come into. Uh, you know the famous Arabatego, mm -hmm. Deputy Western Regional Women Organizer. Okay. She said that the resources that were sent to the region to oil their campaign were misappropriated by a few, of, a few members of the executive. And she vowed to expose them. People are going to chop the campaign money. Mm. My brother, campaign money that was brought. Can we be, so guided, the, the, can we be guided by Professor Mills' Zilfia Sem? Uh, uh, <laughs> advice on this no, matter. You see, you know, because you know why? Mike is too interested in these matters. Well, I mean, <laughs> when you were the one who was talking about, I, I, I was going to maybe talk generally, but you were pushing, giving mm -hmm. examples. I just want to say, mm -hmm. the NDC people, they are angry. Arabatego and the rest, they are angry. I am not surprised. Because they were already chopping government money that we're talking about. Oh. So, Martin, oh, we talked about oh. it. We talked about trouble. We talked about money that was not supposed to be used for bus branding was used. We talked for money that's over bloated on it. We talked, ah. We were even worried about the government money. Not knowing, even as he said, Doofy has him, she and she can, I mean, you know, they are chopping the money at home. Home and money. These are allegations. Everybody knows Unproved, that there's a saying that. Unproven allegations, oh. Mike. I mean, don't. <laughs> Don't don't let propaganda. Yeah, yeah, he's he a very good lawyer. Yeah, few, 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 okay, few, okay, he's a very good lawyer, but the propaganda is making him. Look, this is the issue. Are you a member of the NDC? You are not. I'm a journalist. I'm not a member of the NDC. The members of the NDC, from under the NDC water, are telling us that. <laughs> Sammy. <laughs> Mischief. You know how Sammy, Sammy is looking so look. Mischief. Do you remember the advice they gave us when we were growing up? Mm. Don't chew if you are cocoa. Eh? Mm -hmm. 
as for NDC, even home money. I mean, why? 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 It's too bad. And you know, they are talking about democracy. So you say we're moving to the next topic. Oh, how? I'm surprised. Let me just. You're yeah, giving my. He's giving my. He's talking about my, he said, my he said democracy much. is the reason why they are all talking like that. Yeah, vibrant democracy. It is rather the unit. Eh, there's a sign of disunity in the unit. Because, you see, when there's democracy and there's unity, you all to a certain line. A Siedun Ketia, if I'm wrong, told all of them when this committee was launched yeah. that there are grievances, they should take it to this committee. Yeah. Rather, whenever the committee is rather going to meet in areas like Tamale and recently, as we saw in the Eastern region, that is where rather the fight breaks out. So did we go or did we come? The violence, the level of anger, the things that people are saying. And to the extent that even big men, you know, Victor Smith is not a small fry in the NDCO. Accusing delegates, I mean, if you look, if you look, according to Victor Smith, some of the party executives were greedy to the extent that when resources such as cutlasses are given to them, they go and sell it and pocket the money. NDC. We shall overcome. So, oh, well, you shall, shall overcome, overcome someday. Shall you know, overcome. but until that day, we have to remind Ghanaians that the corruption in NDC was deep. Yeah. They even go to the extent that, listen, listen, they even complain about Victor Smith himself that, listen to this, oh, I am telling you on authority that about a thousand pieces of cloth that came for us to share, he and the people, he meaning Victor Smith, shared 70 pieces among themselves. So even cloth. So what's Victor Smith going to do with cloth? I don't know. Oh. I, if I knew, uh, would I be? We, I'm not NDC, we, so you we, tell we, me. Which paper are you reading? Then, oh, from Chronicle. So you can. <laughs> and then they even go to the extent of accusing Victor Smith's wife. They say when they come to the house, Victor Smith's wife will sack them and tell them that they should go and look for. Let me just even quote that so that it's not. She will tell them to go and find some work to do and see themselves. Oh, the poor woman too has been. No, but NDC, so all over. Uh, your, uh, your big men, their wives, their photo, everywhere, chop, 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 you chop government money, chop campaign money, chop party money, chop, 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 chop everywhere. And you, you think that Ghanaians will vote for this again? Because you see, Ghanaians are now seeing that, hey, it was as someone, oh, oh, okay, not knowing. The money is not just our money, their money too, they chopped it. If you have call, they chewed all the outside chicken and chewed the home chicken too. This NDC for you. you so know, it is very. You know, oh, Sammy. <coughs> you know, there are. You know, let him finish. Let him finish. There's a special audition for Uncle Abu White's uh, uh, show tomorrow. Uh, I think that Mike will be a good actor. You <laughs> okay. Know. You, you are, you, Sammy, you know, you, you are very talented. Money is not acting. You're very talented. Mm. When you are talking, oh, money is not acting. All this chobo business, if you're cuckoo no, and all of that. No, but it's not. I'm, I like <laughs> to explain <laughs> the thing to <laughs> the ground. Calm because down, see, one of the down, things that we were told. You are too excited. Oh, no, I, I wish I was. I'm actually pained. Yeah, allow him to land. Yes, I'm very pained. And when you have people like Agbesi Nuchu, you know Agbesi Nuchu, also a prominent member of NDC, saying that Kofi Adam's election as the coordinator of the campaign was a disaster, the worst disaster in MPP, and that he couldn't understand why former national organizers, he named the Fuswa Pofu, he named Boatinjan, were not made campaign coordinator, and why should Kofi Adams be made campaign coordinator? He didn't manage the funds well. Mr. Kofi Adams was a disaster in terms of the whole campaign. So Ghanaians are now seeing NDC as a people who could not manage government, they could not manage their party, they misappropriated government money, they misappropriated uh, party money, they have misappropriated campaign funds, the disaster is too much. So on the advice of what they themselves are telling us, Ghanaians are watching, and we are quietly watching you. We have no more to say. All right, thank you, and uh, we have no more to say on the program as well. Uh, That's where we end the newspaper review segment. Just uh, remind him we had West under the MPP. Oh, West. All right, Fremashka continues uh, with the next segment of the show. Uh, Mandel Chrissy, uh, much to you. Good morning.